All right, so um, Andrew Yang recently launched his Forward Party. Now, I'm a critic of the Forward Party, and uh, you guys should check out my previous video on that where I lay out in detail why I'm a critic of the Forward Party now. There are aspects of what they do that I support. I support ranked choice voting, for example. Um, but at this point, that's really all that's there to support because they don't have a policy platform. They even dropped UBI, which was supposed to be front and center with the Forward Party. That's gone now. They took it out. So um, I'm a critic. But Andrew Yang went on CNN. Jim Acosta grilled him over the forward party. Uh, I want to say 70 to 80 percent of the grilling is just stupid. It's going after Yang and the forward party in the dumbest way imaginable. There's, you know, maybe 20 or 30 percent in there that is that's fair. <laughs> and so when we get to those parts, I'll point it out. Uh, but I'll also point out the unfairness. Let's listen. And let me ask you about your new forward party, because uh, you say it's an attempt to appeal to what you say is the, the moderate common sense majority. It's also the same name as your book. Um, is this an attempt to pump up book sales? Come on. Come on. The last thing you should do as a commentator, pundit, whatever, just a public person, the last thing you should do is question motivations and intentions. Now, I'm not saying you can never do it, but if you're going to do it, you should have overwhelming evidence. You should be very sure that that path is a path worth going down. Because if it's not, then you're just a douchebag. So the first question is like, well, this, this is about your book sales, right? Come on, man. Come on. Well, uh, I, I'd have to say this would be a pretty silly way to go about it, given that we <laughs> have co-founded a national party uh, that now has tens of thousands of Americans signed up, uh, co-chaired by former governor of New Jersey, Christine Todd Whitman. <laughs> by the way, he's so many people are now in the boat that I'm in when it comes to the forward party, where people who are used to kind of support it or be agnostic are now very critical of it. So if this was a way to go about selling books, it, it was a terrible idea because he lost a lot of people who previously were like Yang curious, right? Um, but now the fact he's like, look at the names he's trotting out there as if it's like a good thing that they are now part of this forward party thing. Let me run it back a little. A pretty silly way to go about it, given that we <laughs> have co-founded a national party uh, that now has tens of thousands of Americans signed up, uh, co-chaired by former governor of New Jersey, Christine Todd Whitman. And the fact is 62% of Americans- But are you just promoting yourself? I guess is what I'm, I guess what I'm asking is, are you just out there promoting <laughs> yourself with it? Yeah, Dick, we know what you're asking and you're getting the answer and it's not the answer you like, but you're still trying to hammer home that smear. Yes. Uh, again, Jim, that there, there are, as you can easily imagine, there are hundreds of better ways uh, to go about uh, promoting a, a, a book than starting a political party to do so. I mean, I, I'm building this party because 62% of Americans want it. We're more polarized now. Okay, look. Yes, 62% of Americans want a third party. The idea that they're all on board with the forward party is not remotely true. Because of that 62%, there's a certain percentage of them that are right wing. There's a certain percentage of them that are left wing. There's a certain percentage of them that are sort of like apolitical. Uh, they have, just because they're independents doesn't mean they're on board with the forward party. You know, and especially, I mean, look, especially because it's particularly vapid and there's no there there in terms of policy. So it's just, he's sort of, there's a leap there, right? Like 62% want a third party. That doesn't mean that they all want your third party. Ever. And the fact is the two parties have divvied up the country so that 79 to 90 percent of races are uncompetitive. Most of the people watching this right now aren't even living under a two party sister system. They're living under one party. Uh, the other week I asked a uh, veteran Democratic strategist James Carville about uh, what he thought uh, of the forward party, and he had quite a strong reaction. Let's listen to that. I think in a, a nation awash. Hate this guy. In really stupid ideas. Th this stands out is a really stupid idea. Uh, it, Ralph Nader basically elected George W. Bush in 2000. Jill Stein. So notice something. It's not a really stupid idea because of here's X, Y, and Z substantive reasons about their platform and the direction they want to take the country. It's a really stupid idea because, and the argument effectively is, because all third parties are a stupid idea and trying anything different is a stupid idea. No. Not, no, 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 no. No. Look, I've been a critic of third parties, but I'm a critic of third parties from a dotting the I's and crossing the T's perspective. In other words, I would like to live in a system where we have all these viable third parties and fourth parties and fifth parties, etc. But we don't live in that system yet. So first you have to tackle how systemically rigged it is. Then we can get into building out third party infrastructure. In other words, I think a lot of people who go down that third party rabbit hole are putting the cart before the horse. And it just drives me crazy because I'm probably autistic. And I look at that and I'm like, why are you guys not addressing this first thing that you obviously have to address first? But his argument is just like, no, literally all third parties are evil and wrong, and they're all stealing elections from people. No, that's called, it's called democracy.
called democracy, James Carville. People get to vote for whoever they want to vote for. Basically elect Donald Trump in 2016. And if you took all of Jill Stein's votes and gave them to Hillary Clinton, Hillary still wouldn't have won. She still wouldn't have won. That's a bullshit argument, and he knows that's a bullshit argument. And the only possible thing this could do is bleed some moderate Republicans off of voting for whoever the Democratic nominee is. This thing is going nowhere. In other words, look, the Democratic Party, let me rephrase what he's telling you. The Democratic Party can't, um, by the strength of their own ideas and their own campaigning, attract voters if uh, these guys are going to come in here and swoop them right out of potentially voting for us. That says a lot about the Democratic Party, doesn't it, son? It really does. It's, it's vanity. It's he. Look at me. That's vanity. That's vanity. It's not vanity to just assume that you're owed the votes of the majority of the country. That's not vanity. It's not vanity to be entitled and then to chastise voters. They don't fall in line. It's vanity to try something new. Now, again, look, I'm not, I'm a critic of the forward party. Um, but he's making an argument here against ever changing the system to allow more parties. If I could wake up tomorrow and press a button and have ranked choice voting, I'd do it. And then we'd have vibrant third parties like that. Um, he doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to do that. Because he's a democratic tribalist hack. It's performance art. What's your response to that, Andrew? Is this, hey, look at me? Oh, well, even his description jumps straight to the presidential race, uh, which is not where our focus is at all. Our focus is on the 506,000 locally elected officials, school board members, city council members, mayors, county executives. Because, again, in the majority of the country, 70 percent of these races are uncompetitive or uncontested. The American people want real choice. Uh, we want to provide right, people it obviously to them worry. in their towns I mean, and, and communities. Those, and where those they lower live. level races are obviously important. Uh, but people worry about another 2016 scenario uh, where a third party candidate like Jill Stein or Gary Johnson uh, costs Hillary Clinton the election. Uh, Look at that. We're two minutes and 42 seconds in. The questions we've got are, are you just doing this for book sales? So are you like a total hack who only cares about your own profit? That's the first question. And the second question is... Um, what about the spoiler effect? What about the spoiler effect? What about the spoiler effect? We need to hand it over to our beloved Democrats and Republicans who everybody fucking despises. Don't you think that putting yourself out there, putting this party out there as an alternative that appeals to some moderate Republicans uh, could potentially throw the race to Donald Trump, put Donald Trump back in the White House? Is that what you want? He literally just said they're not doing presidential politics right now. Oh. Uh I'm the co-chair of an anti-extremist party. I ran against Trump. Uh, so I, I don't plan on doing anything that's going to increase Trump's odds. But again, 62% of Americans again? want a third party. And we are looking right now at a competitive U.S. Senate race as one example, where you have an independent Evan McMullen running neck and neck with a Trump-endorsed incumbent in an right, environment the Democratic that, frankly, party. I love this. He's touting the fact that like Evan McMullen is affiliated with the forward party. Come on, man. McMuffin is a former CIA agent. He's down the line right wing. He's just anti-Trump. This is what I mean. This is the problem with the forward party. It's totally vapid and vacuous and empty and hollow, and there's no there there in terms of policy. It's just like, it's just like standard third way politics. You know, let's pick the midpoint between the psycho Republicans and the psycho Democrats, the corrupt Democrats and the corrupt Republicans, and we'll that's we'll be there. But if you're halfway in between corrupt psychos and corrupt psychos, what does that make you? Think about it. In the Democratic, Utah, party, could not the Democratic party out in Utah got behind Evan McMullen. Andrew, why not run again as a Democrat? You want to be president, well, uh, run again as a Democrat. Uh, so, Jim, you know, I haven't made any conclusions. <laughs> he's, he's asking, he's talking like Yang's going to run for president again. It doesn't look like he is, right? And he's like, well, if you want to be president, he's like, hey, I didn't say that. He didn't say that. About 2024, except for the fact that. By the way, this is going to take a turn soon where I start agreeing more with Acosta than Yang because Acosta asks, asks a handful of decent questions here. Wait for it. The United States needs a unifying, positive third party movement because we're getting increasingly polarized. And if it's not Trump, it's going to be a successor to Trump because the system is uniquely vulnerable to authoritarianism. You have a two party system. And I can hear the folks over at the White House. President Biden has had a better system. But President Biden. OK, but look, you can't you can't bemoan um, authoritarianism and then also welcome into your new party with open arms, former Trump and Bush administration officials, which is what he did. And they were happy about that. They were kind of bragging about that. So that sort of rings hollow, Andrew. It does. Oh, what do I do?
Biden has had Republican support on a number of agenda items. He is trying to work in a bipartisan fashion. Uh, why not try to support that as a Democrat? You were just a Democrat. The point Acosta is making is kind of true. Like, oh, you what? You want to be like a moderate? You want to be like a centrist? That's what you want to do? <laughs> the Democratic Party is perfect for you. They're corporate centrists. Like, that's what they do. That's who they are. This uh, Biden reaches out every other day to Mitch McConnell, even though Mitch McConnell tells him to go fuck himself with a cactus. Democrat 10 minutes ago. Oh, uh, I support attempts to cross the aisle, but we can all see that seven out of 10 of the Republicans that bravely voted to impeach Trump are already going to be out of Congress by the time uh, January comes along. And the moderate population in both parties is unfortunately dwindling quickly. No, 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 no. The people that have a hold on the Democratic Party and have for fucking decades are the so-called moderates, are the, you know, the Bill Clinton types, the third way types, the New Deal, no, 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 excuse me, the, the New Democrats, the um, the Blue Dog Democrats, like, that's who has ran the Democratic Party leadership for decades. So your politics do sort of fit in there, Andrew. So the political incentives end up dis, uh, disproportionately empowering the 10% of extremes on both sides. But you're going to have to come has, up with policy. You hate this argument, the e, like there's 10% of equal extremes on both sides. That is not true. That's such a lazy analysis. Positions. Negative results. Right, we but just Andrew, need a better system. Yeah, but Andrew, you're going to have to have policy uh, positions at some point. How does the forward party... See, now now we're getting to the part where Acosta's 100% right. How do you feel about Roe versus Wade? Should it have been overturned? Well, I personally uh, think that women's reproductive rights are fundamental human rights. But the forward party has uh, not left or right, but forward stance on even the most divisive and contentious issues. Well, what does that mean? Don't you have to take a majority. position on something? <laughs> what does that mean, bro? <laughs> He's like, should Roe v. Wade be overturned? He's like, well, look, I'm supportive of reproductive rights, but my party, my party doesn't really care. <laughs> Look, I'm being a little flippant. I get it. He's saying we're going to have some candidates that are pro-choice and some candidates that are pro-life. It's just not an area where he's going to have a hard take. Okay. All right. Look, fair enough. Fair enough. Right. But, but are you going to be like that on every issue? Every single issue is going to be like that. So look, there are some issues where I can see that argument because there might be some merit on both sides of a question, right? Sometimes, but on an issue like healthcare, I'm not interested in the in in the debate between the side that says, hey, every other developed country has universal health care. We should have it, too. We just need to kick out the mafia middlemen in the for profit health insurance industry versus the people who are like, let's keep doing the corruption and the price gouging and the robbery of Americans and the way too high prices for everything involving your health. That's not a debate where there's like reasonable sides and different perspectives and you're just coming at it from a different set of values no that's a debate where it's like one side is correct about empirically what would be better for everybody and one side is wrong so if you're going to do that and you do it on every issue you're just a total blank slate and that's that's sort of useless you can't hold together a coalition where you could have people in the coalition where on every single issue everybody vehemently disagrees I mean, it take take this to its logical extreme. It's like, in our coalition, we want, you know, fascists and uh, communists, and they're going to get along. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know about that, dog. Do you have to take a position of... on something? You can't just say, well, I, you well, know, this I... is a hot-button issue, so I'm not going to take a position on you. You know, if you want to run the country, you're going to have to make some hard decisions, Andrew. Uh, again, the forward party is about that common sense consensus majority view, which is very clear. On the common sense consensus majority view is across the board, solidly on the left, raising the minimum wage, raising taxes on the wealthy, pro unionization, raising taxes on corporations, universal health care, free college, legalizing marijuana, um, abolishing or, or, or at the very least reducing student loan debt. I haven't seen a poll on eliminating all student loan debt. That's why I, I reeled that one in a touch. But like solidly on the left, solidly on the left, getting money out of politics, taking no corporate money. By the way, what's your position on that, Andrew? We'll get back to that. Um, so the common sense consensus view is like Americans want social democracy. So why didn't you start the social democratic third party? Abortion, it's clear. What about guns? What guns? about it's assault weapons? Climate change. It's actually clear on just about every issue under the sun. Should 18 year olds be able to buy AR-15s? AR should, because of the nature of our system. Should 18-year-olds be able to buy AR-15s? Again, the common sense consensus majority is that there should be some uh, rules around background checks and access to, to firearms. But we're not getting any of these <laughs> things, Jim. Oh, wait, 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 wait. They did just pass. It was weak. It was a million loopholes. It was only a handful of provisions. 
but they did just get through gun reform. They did. I remember I, we covered it in detail on the show. Go check out the video. You can see all the provisions. Okay. So he's saying like, he's saying, yeah, yeah, like I support these things, but we're different. No, you're just describing like the standard democratic politician response. You are. That's what you're describing. Because the two party system does not need to deliver. But it doesn't sound like you're taking any hard positions. It sounds like you're trade power. It sounds like you're, you're sort of a fill in the blank party. You're, you know, if, if. True. Somebody uh, wants a, a, a party with no clear policy positions, you're it. But unfortunately, in the real world, in the real world, you have to take a position on something. True. Well, well, we're for the common sense consensus view on guns, abortion, climate change, but we're not getting. OK, OK, but then wait. So then that does mean if you're for the common sense consensus view on guns, abortion, etc., the people who are not for the common sense view on those issues are really not part of the forward party. But like I said before, you welcomed in with open arms, former Trump administration officials, uh, former Bush administration officials, and you got Evan McMuffin running for you. Again, that guy's a standard Republican. He's just anti-Trump. So he doesn't agree with those things we just went through. So what is it? What is it? It's this, Andrew, this is not going well, bro. A common but sense what, consensus. What are those results? positions? Not any of those things, Jim. And those Americans are just sort of a fuzzy. Why. But it's those are fuzzy, nebulous. It sounds like you came up with something in a focus group. Uh, you know, common <laughs> sense. You know, middle of the ground. That, that sounds wonderful. That sounds great. But at the end of the day, don't you have to take a position on something? Well, the, the great thing is the American people know where we want the country to go, and what we know that we need a more dynamic, truly representative system than we're getting right now. Which is why the Ford Party is growing so quickly. Tens of thousands of Americans have signed up in all fifty states because we know that the two-party system is getting worse, not better, and who we is, know we need something new. And, and who is going to be bankrolling the Ford Party? Will you pledge to uh, be very upfront and candid and transparent about uh, where your money comes from? Uh, yeah, it's transparent for all to see. And the people that are bankrolling us are everyday Americans who are sending 10, 20, 30 dollars because there's such an enormous appetite for change. Any and one of the things I tell people any corporate money coming in outside money, uh, again, money? it's it's completely transparent for all to see. Mm. But I can say that our money has not been coming in from corporations. It's been coming in from everyday Americans who want something better. For and us you'll, pledge, you'll pledge to put that on a website or if a news. Or it does. There's not a hard pledge to take no corporate money. He's saying, well, empirically, it hasn't come from the corporations. But yeah, but if you if they want to cut those checks, what are you going to do? Is there a principled stance against taking it? That's a different question. So look, this is an area of weakness for the forward party. There's no doubt about it. But I will also say to Jim Acosta, when was the last time you asked that question of a Republican official or a Democratic official? I don't think you ever have. Why? Because you've grandfathered in the corruption for the Republicans and the Democrats. You've grandfathered it in as if it's okay. It's just part of the system. It just is what it is. It's not. Just like I don't want the forward party taking any corporate money. I don't want any of the parties taking any corporate money. But you only ask that question of one of them. So that is unfair. That is unfair. But having said that, his answer is not good. It's not. His answer is not good. Organization. Again, if you have the former Bush administration officials, uh, uh, Trump administration officials, the idea that you're going to be principally opposed to corporate money, my ass cheeks comes to you and says, we'd like to see this information. Uh, will you pledge to make that information available? Well, Jim, I'm going to actually tell you, we don't have a choice. Like we have to file every three months. So anyone who wants to, to see it can just check it out. And, and finally, I, I guess, you know, it would be good to be able to get a clear answer from you on Donald Trump. Um, what is more important to you to see a forward party candidate become president of the United States or to make sure that Donald Trump stays out of the White House? Uh, let me just let me put the question this way. If you were a forward party candidate, let's say in 2024, and you are running the risk of drawing voters away from the Democratic Party candidate in a way that would put Trump back in the White House, would you pull back to avoid that situation from happening? Well, well Jim, the, the truth is that you could resolve this particular issue very, very straightforwardly by adopting something called ranked choice voting, which would enable people to vote for anyone they want. And then if their number one choice doesn't win, then their second choice would get their vote. But the truth is that neither Democrats nor Republicans really want to solve for what you're calling the, the spoiler effect, because they're more about well, it's real, limiting it's the choice of the American people rather than opening it up. Our goal is a system that allows Americans to vote for whomever they want and not be, frank, frankly, scared of, quote unquote, wasting their vote or spoiling it for someone else. I think that's a good answer from Andrew. He's like, look, if you really if you're really worried about this, the solution's ranked choice voting. But my guess is you're not going to want to do it and Democrats and Republicans aren't going to want to do it because then they would probably lose some power because some third party candidates would start to win some elections. So he's he caught him on that one. Yang is 100 percent right on that one. And I agree with him on that one. So you don't see the forward party as a potential spoiler 
that could result in Donald Trump being re- reelected or <laughs> he, can't, he can't help himself put back <laughs> in the White House. Again, our fo- he's such a, like a corporate conventional wisdom talking head. Acosta is focus is on local races, including some very exciting congressional races uh, this November, where we think there's a lot on the line. I'd urge people to check out Evan McMullen's. Uh, no, do not do that. E- Evan McMuffin is a terrible fucking standard Republican who just doesn't like Trump. U.S. Senate campaign in Utah that I'm supporting personally. Uh, Lisa Murkowski in Alaska. <laughs> you see, like, are you not committed to any of the things you said you were committed to in your presidential campaign, Andrew? Like. You know, UBI was a big thing. Drug decriminalization is a big thing. There's no way McMuffin supports any of those things. Like, what are you doing? As a very principled leader who also voted to impeach Trump, who's on the ballot, uh, her primary competitor is a Trump uh, endorsed uh, election denier. So I think that. Did he just say, who did he say right there? Who did he say? Again, our focus is on local races, including some very exciting congressional races uh, this November, where we think there's a lot on the line. I'd urge people to check out Evan McMullen's. Uh, U.S. Senate camp. Who do you say after this? Pain in Utah that I'm supporting personally. Uh, Lisa Murkowski in Alaska. Oh. Is a- oh, oh. Lisa Murkowski, are you kidding me, bro? Holy shit. Oh, Yang, what are you doing? Lisa Murkowski you're supporting? That's the saddest thing I've ever heard. Oh, my God. Oh, total standard insider Washington politician corrupt the whole thing the whole thing just because oh she was for trump impeachment that's all that takes that's how low the fucking bar is for you to support him very principled leader who also voted to impeach trump who's on the ballot uh her primary competitor is a trump uh endorsed uh election denier so i think that there's a lot on the line right here in november and that's where our, our focus okay all right their biggest problem is this he's starting a third party and he's he's putting the cart before the horse in this sense he doesn't have a platform. There's no platform. There's no, like, here's what you're signing up for, bro. Here's what we support. Here's what we're going to push for. Here's what we're going to go to the mat for. It's all this, like, airy, we believe in good things. We don't believe in bad things. Here's some, like, totally substanceless platitudes that I support. The only thing that's substantive that's still there is ranked choice voting. That's it. He even dropped UBI, which was his thing for so long. So, look, 80% of that interview was hackery from Jim Acosta. But the 20% where he was right, he really exposed Yang a little bit here. Because you can't, you can't. How can you ask people to sign up for your political party when you don't even have anything? You don't even have the list of the shit that you believe in and you're going to fight for in terms of policy. The arrogance of that, the hubris of that. Anyway, you guys get the gist of it. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.